I've been considering this for a while, but as I was going, I have way too much, so I'm going to just give you what I think is the best part to give you. And what I'm considering was um, the account of Peter, Peter's denial, but that there were three denials and that there were three affirmations afterwards that he was able to, um, that each denial that he had was, was met with an affirmation or was redeemed by an affirmation at the end. And how that this, con this account of Peter's sifting in the time afterward, there's a lot to be seen there, but there's not everything that's going to be seen in one time at this point. There's not enough time to do that. But there's a lot of benefit for Peter, but there's a lot of benefit for us as well to be learning of the things that were, were done in that. The account is Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, and John 18. And each of them have a little different perspectives and a little different things added here and there. But they're all, that's all the accounts. And the three things I wanted to look at today were, are um, Jesus' warnings, the denials, and then the affirmations that come after Peter's conversion. And the warning... The warnings, um, it says, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended, but because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more veh vehemently. Peter spake, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee in any wise. Likewise said also all the apostles. So we can see here the desire of Peter in his heart towards the Lord. But we can also see, and I'll say this again later, how he didn't really understand all that was in his own heart, that there were some areas that were, um, were needing cleansing and were needing some building up and some strengthening that he didn't even know. Because right after this, Jesus said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Peter hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And I was considering how Jesus, the Son of God, prayed for Peter for this, um, for this time. And I was considering, when has Jesus told you that he's prayed for you specifically for a certain trial that you have had? This was a very good, um, something Peter could look back upon and, and remember and use this as hope that Jesus has prayed for me through this time that I would not lose my faith. And I was considering how that this particular trial and testing was very great for Peter and it required divine assistance. It was not one that he could do not, not that we endure things on our own, but in a sense, you do have the strength that you have been given that you're able to, to go with that strength and rely on the Lord to help you. This was one that even the strength that he did have would not have even been sufficient. He needed divine assistance to come through this time. Um, Peter didn't know to the extent of what this meant, but Jesus did, and if he hadn't interceded for Peter, he may not have come out of this trial as he did. And the response that Peter has to, to Jesus saying these things is, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt, deny, thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. So we can see again Peter's heart. He did love the Lord and he knew in his heart, at least the part of his heart that he could understand and see of his own, that he was ready to die for the Lord. But he did not know the, how grievous this temptation was going to be. He didn't know that his soul was in the balance in this, in this act. Um, we can see that Peter loved the Lord by the speech that he gave to Jesus' warnings and in how he acted when Jesus was taken away by the, um, by the multitude and the, the high priests, the, those who came with the high priests to uh, bring him to the court. Um, Peter knew his heart to be for the Lord but couldn't see the areas that needed strengthening. And I considered how David spoke of communing with your heart to see the areas that were lacking so that you could um, to know what's in your own heart, but also to, to seek the Lord for the help that you need for things you can't see in your own heart because we can't see everything that is in our own heart because we are of this earth unable to see things where the divine, um, but the light that is given is able to help us to see things better. And every believer has the same experience when we go through trials and temptations. The Lord shows us areas that need strengthening things that need to be discarded and areas that need to be built up and torn down and rebuilt so that there are, so that there's growth that can be done and there is advancement that can be done. And I was considering at this time, Jesus was the one who was showing them what was in their own hearts more than they knew themselves because of the time that they were living in and because the full light of salvation had not come yet. And this time of sifting was for Peter's demise because Satan would have it no other way, but it was for the growth and strength of Peter it caused him to fully rely on the Lord and to see that there's always room for advancement and growth when it involves 
following the Lord and loving the Lord. And I liked how Matthew Henry expressed this in his commentary. It said, Christ's express prediction of his denying him thrice, I tell thee, Peter, thou dost not know thine own heart, but must be left to thyself a little, that thou mayest know it, and mayest never trust, it, want, trust to it again. The cock shall not crow this day before thou even deny that thou knowest me. No, Christ knows us better than we know ourselves, and knows the evil that is in us, and we and will be done by us, which we ourselves do not suspect. It is well for us that Christ knows where we are weak better than we do, and therefore we're to come in with grace sufficient, that he knows how far a temptation will, pre will prevail, and therefore when to say, hitherto shall it come, and no further. So I, I, I appreciate that because it does show how Christ knows us and God knows us better than we know ourselves. Yeah. And because of that, then we can grow and then we can advance in the faith because of the things that, that he knows that we don't know ourselves yet. But when we do know them and when we do understand them, then we can fully and more, more fully trust in him and rely on him and, and be a partaker of him. Um, the next part is um, Peter follows to see what is to become of Jesus. And the next part is where he, where he does his denials. And I was just going to really quickly not go through the whole account because there's not time. But the things that he said, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest about knowing Christ. I do not know the man. I know not the man. In a sense, I don't know somebody isn't really a big deal to say. But because of who it was and the circumstance that was around it, he was denying the Lord. And the, he had already heard before how the Lord had spoken of those who deny me or who do not, who, those who deny me, I will deny before my father. He, those words have already been spoken by Christ, and yet they had not been understood because of not receiving the Holy Spirit yet to help them to understand some of the things that had been done. And yet this is what Peter had done. But the Lord had prayed for him in this. So this was not to his, to his demise or to his being denied before the Lord. This was something for the Lord to work in and to show to show Peter some things that needed to be done. Um, we can see how grievous the sifting was and how hard it was and difficult. Peter was, okay, and after, the, after he denied him, I wanted to read that last part. It says, it says, and immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew the second time, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. And so I, I liked how it, it shows that it was, he was convicted by a look. And he went and wept bitterly. There was something in this denial that was over an hour long. It says that the you know, between the first and the second doesn't really give a lot of time. But then between the second and the third denial was at least an hour. Between, so it was a very lengthy time of of having to endure this sifting and having to endure this trial and and because of these things and because of the just a look is what changed him and he went and wept barely it shows that shows his heart that he did not see and know that in him that there was this possibility of denying the lord especially when he was one who said he would have died with him he was there he was watching to see what would happen to his lord and yet this is what satan had desired of him to be done um when he wept bitterly because he remembered Jesus' word, he saw that he had fulfilled Jesus' word as well to his own sorrow. He didn't think he was capable of this because of his love for the Lord, but Satan was cruel in his sifting. But we also see Jesus is merciful that when he was, his sifting was over, he immediately looked to Peter, and Peter was sorrowful. There was no lingering sifting to be done. It was finished. The trial was over, and now the regenerative work could begin. Amen. The converting and restoring of Peter could begin. Um, but Peter was in a much better state because of this than he was in the beginning of the trial. And something else Matthew Henry wrote about the conversion of Peter says, the charge that he gives to Peter to help others as he should be helped of God. When thou art conv converted, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art recovered by the grace of God and brought to repentance, do what thou canst to recover others. When thou hast found thy faith, kept from failing, labor to confirm the faith of others and to establish them, which thou hast found mercy of God thyself. When thou hast found mercy of God thyself, Encourage others to hope that they should also find mercy. Those that have fallen into sin must be converted from it. Those that have turned aside must return. Those that have left their first love must do their first works. Those that through grace are converted from sin must do what they can to strengthen their brethren that stand and to prevent their falling. So I, I like how Matthew Henderson said that as well, that 
it wasn't just for his own conversion. It was for him to be able to be a better minister and a more capable minister of the things that the Lord was going to give him, um, as we'll see in a few minutes. Um, so the next part is Peter's affirmations, and I'll go ahead and read this one. It says, so when they had, so when, this is after they, they went fishing, and the Lord had them catch a very great fit, draw a fish after they'd not caught anything all evening. And so they're dining together with Jesus and sharing this fish that Jesus had and they had. So, and so when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, or Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith unto them, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. So there's the first affirmation. He had denied, the, denied Christ once, and now he's saying, yes, I do love you. Um, and so Jesus gives him a charge, a work to do because of being faithful in this. He said, um, he said, he said then to him, feed my sheep, which in a sense, Peter wouldn't have been as capable of doing if he hadn't gone through this time. And so he saith then to him, he saith then to him, the second time, Simon, son of Jodas, lovest thou me? And he saith then again, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith then to him, feed my sheep. And so he, oh, sorry, the first one was feed my lambs. The second one was feed my sheep. So he's given two charges of the same um, category, and he's given two chances to redeem what he had said beforehand. It says, and he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Now, I know it states that Peter was grieved because Jesus had asked him three times the same thing to, you know, do you love me or not? Because he had in the past denied him. But I also considered how Jesus gave him the opportunity to avenge his denials with these affirmations and how Jesus gave him three opportunities to affirm his love for him and how he was a merciful shepherd. Not only did he get to affirm his love for Jesus, but now he has the charge to feed the flock of God. Good payment was given for enduring a great trial. This was also a chance for Peter to show that he was truly converted and that he was able to fulfill the word of Jesus again, to strengthen his brethren. This was also an opportunity for Peter to revenge the days of his disobedience and to redeem the time which had been granted to him. So some things that I had considered before I make sure I finished everything I wanted to say. I was considering how he, he denied him publicly, but this is also a public chance for him to show his love and his his knowledge and his appreciation for the Savior as well. The three affirmations came with much greater responsibility that Peter, than Peter had previously, but now he was capable of fulfilling much more that, and what was required of him. And so things to take away from this that I consider were to trust the Lord to show us the areas in which we need strengthening and to rely on him for the help we need lest we do fall. And after we have endured a trial and and to come out believing, take the understanding that has been given and use it and apply it. Let us not be negligent to redeem the time and revenge the days of our disobedience, because we all have days of being disobedient before the Lord. And let us be continually thankful for a merciful and faithful high priest that is bringing us to glory and conforming us into his perfect image. And also, just to remember the intercession of our Lord, how he did pray for Peter and how he does intercede for us. Um, in a much more specific and capable way and how we are able to, to benefit from that even more than Peter was at the time because of how he is with the Father now and how we have the, the fellowship of him dwelling in us. So I'll go ahead and say a prayer this morning for Brother Michael before he comes to our class and open us up for this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for these times that we come together and that we can anticipate our meetings together knowing that you have spread a table before us and that we are able to partake of it. And I pray that you would help us to be, to be good partakers of the things that you've given to us and that you've given to our brethren. And I also pray that you would help us to, to be mindful of the time in which we live and to redeem the time of our, of our disobedience, but also to, to be very fruitful and faithful in the time that you've given to us to do those things that you have required of us and of those things that you have desired of us to do. And I also pray that you'd be the brother Michael this morning and give him the ability to speak the things that he has seen clearly so that we are able to understand and to be able to, to edify and encourage him as well in these things. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen.